here's the basic question I have. Why walk away from a seat that you know is safe, you're in a leadership position as a, as a chair of the County Affairs Committee, on a gamble that may sideline you? One, thank you so much for having me. Um, let me share with you, my record in the House is one of fighting for issues that disproportionately impact women, making big changes like passing the Lavinia Masters Act, which tackled a, a long-standing issue that had been ignored, which is the backlog of thousands of untested rape kits. I wanna take those leadership skills from the House to the Senate. And not only are we able to pass good pieces of legislation, I also do a lot of work with respect to domestic violence, expanding access to protective orders to keep women who are survivors of domestic violence uh, safe in addition to you know fighting for the issues that impact our community. And so as a leader of a caucus as well, we not only are able to pass good legislation, but we also fight when we have attacks by Governor Abbott against our community. And our current incumbent senator does not have that fight. And so I want to take my skills from the House to the Senate. I, I want to ask you about that in a moment, but, but at the end of the day, this is a gamble. I mean, you, clearly you know that. What are your odds on this? I, I feel confident that we're gonna earn the votes of, of our community, which is a diverse, beautiful community. And um, I think the voters will see the contrast. And this is really also about a bigger issue and the threat of democracy that's being posed by Donald Trump, Ken Paxton, Greg Abbott. Like we don't need somebody who's not gonna be standing up to fight. We don't need somebody who's gonna buckle under pressure to Dan Patrick. We need to have somebody that, you know, when we have a woman who, a Dallas woman, Mrs. Carr, was right. having to travel to another state in order to obtain reproductive rights. When we have a governor who is terrorizing mixed status families, like there is no room for error. We have to be, we need, we need somebody who's gonna stand up and represent this district in that. And that's why I'm running. You said buckle under pressure, talking about your opponent. What, on what issue is he buckled under? Yeah, numerous issues. Most recently, Senate Bill 4 in the uh, third called special session is a legislation by the governor that imposes 10 years mandatory minimum justice time if for example you're driving somebody the incumbent also buckled we have lgbt but, families let me pause you on that senate bill four in the third session was on human smuggling though in the fourth session it was on on the issue you and i have talked about which is is letting local and state police stop anybody they suspect of being here illegally right and that bill is a governor abbott bill that the incumbent voted for in which when that should have been a no this district is a district that has people that speak more than more Wh than Wh which one did he vote for though he Wh voted for sb4 in the third call special session which in october to, which the is 10 to, years mandatory jail time which is to increase penalties for people who who smuggle humans right for example for also if you're driving somebody an undocumented person anywhere and the problem with that is that he doesn't understand the threat that civil rights groups have discussed and you know been raising their voices about how that is going to contribute to uh, mass incarceration racial profiling and that's not acceptable but wasn't so, this a law already on the books it's a law on the books that was all, that was very broadly drafted the problem is it puts it, it takes away judicial discretion and so no longer can a judge determine if you have a good Samaritan for example who is driving an undocumented person to the airport or a an employer who is driving their employee to the work site now you get 10 years mandatory minimum jail time that is extreme that is that that is the governor abbott bill and we fought hard to try to defeat that legislation in the house and that's the issue but the also the issue the the issue is you know other votes that he has taken but it really is about more than that i think we as democrats have to decide especially in the times that we're in the threat to democracy posed by dan patrick abbott and others is what what type of leadership are we going to want? Are we going to want, you know, are we going to continue with business as usual? Or are we going to, you know, up our game? And that, that's why I'm running. You said that your opponent is too timid. What, what exactly would you do, though, that your opponent is not doing right now in the Texas Senate? So I will fight, and I think our but community is he not knows fighting, that. Though? I mean, is he not fighting? Not fighting enough, no. Especially when he's throwing our community under the bus, and so, and that's that's part of the problem. LGBTQ families, for example, as well, are under attack. Transgender children are under attack, and he was one of two senators who voted present, not voting. Like that's not good enough. You need to vote no and stand up for our LGBTQ families. There, there there's too much at stake um, right now in these times for us to be able. You know, we we need to have somebody who fights for our community and also delivers big wins. And that's what I've been able to do in the Texas House. How much thought went into this? Because you know how rare this is where a, an incumbent Democrat is facing another incumbent Democrat. You had to think about this. 
What, what was the strategy behind that and, 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 and why go after an incumbent? You've already talked about why you think he's timid and, and, and you don't think he's fighting enough, but still, this is pretty rare. Yeah, it's rare, and these are unusual times, Jason. Like, you know, whenever we have the threat of a Trump presidency, the incumbent, unfortunately, does not understand this threat on our communities, and we cannot afford to have somebody who's not going to stand up for us every single time. It, we, we, there is too much at stake. He's not the one with the target on his back. Our communities have a target on their back, and that's why, that's why I'm in this race, to give voters a choice so they can decide what type of leadership that we as Democrats want in the Texas Senate. You're obviously in leadership in, in the House right now, Chair of the, the County Affairs Committee. Uh, there, If elected to the Senate, Dan Patrick has made it perfectly clear he'll never appoint a Democrat uh, to any leadership position. You're, you're going to be on the on the bottom rung with every other Democrat. I, I don't I don't need to be a chair in the Texas Senate in order to get things done. I'm going to fight for our community right here but in Republicans Dallas. Republicans have a majority in that in that chamber. Republicans too. have a majority in the Texas House. I've dealt with that. I've dealt uh, you know under pressure in those scenarios, and and I have the experience and we have the the results that we have delivered for Texas families. And so that's why we want to take our fight from the House to the Senate. And 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 we know that we can do it. These times are crucial for our. There is a sense of urgency for our community that we cannot afford to risk having somebody in there who's not going to stand up and fight for us. And that's why I'm in the race. How much money do you have right now? Or will you file on the 16th, cash on hand? But folks will see whenever the report comes out, we're working hard to raise as much money as we can. Our resources are coming in and we're, I feel confident we'll have the resources to prevail. Two and a half months to the primary election, though. I mean, you, neither time nor money are on your side right now. I, I believe that we have time on our side, and the fact in is, in 80 days, you think you can you can turn it around in 80 days? We have knocked on hundreds of thousands of doors in a large part of this district since 2015, since I first got in this race. Worked hard to earn the support of our community, and I'm going to continue to work. And so, and and we, I feel confident that we will win, and we have the polling to show it too. Why wait until the last minute to the filing deadline to announce your candidacy? Why, why not announce this six months ago when you can, you can, you know, ramp up a tax, ramp up your, your bank account and a number of other things? Why wait? I was focused on special session. Let me tell you, as a leader of a caucus, we were running floor strategy, and I was there on the floor when the senator was not. It should have been there fighting for us, absent from critical votes. I was there leading the charge against Governor Abbott's discriminatory attacks, uh, preparing for points of order, um, getting our amendment strategy ready, working with our other caucuses. And so um, that has been my commitment, and it wasn't until after we got out of the fourth special session, and you know, we're, we're ready to go. You'll be on the, on the ballot in March with your opponent. What's the elevator pitch? How are you two most different? Why should someone elect you over him? The fact is that one, we have fought for our community doing hard work to highlight uh, the issues that disproportionately impact women, sexual assault, sexual harassment. I've passed legislation to extend the statute of limitations for sexual harassment. We've fought for survivors of domestic violence as well as, you know, have brought justice to thousands and thousands of women who have been waited for years to get their rate kits tested. Our legislation that has over $50 million, which is unprecedented from the Texas budget, is now bringing justice to thousands of survivors of sexual assault. And we're going to continue to work and we're going to take that, those leadership skills from the House to the Senate. And I'm so honored to, to be able to be in this race to bring uh, that kind of leadership to the Senate. And that's the Lavinia Masters Act, right? That's correct. And it, we talked about that uh, quite a bit and made a lot of uh, news, I think, nationally when that happened several Absolutely. Years ago. Texas is now a leader in rape kit reform because of the Lavinia Masters Act. We've shortened time frames. We've done its major, its omnibus legislation that is unprecedented. And that's why Texas Monthly also named me one of the best legislators in the past, because we're able to deliver results on big, big issues that have been ignored for a really long time. Latinos make up almost half of the Senate district here, population wise. You know this very well. They do not vote as much as white and black voters do. You have 80 something days to turn this around. How do you do it? Latino voters vote when we ask them to vote. We have a track record of working to knocking on their doors and letting them know when the elections are. And Latinos are now the largest, one of the largest population shares in the entire state of Texas. And if, you know, we're going to continue to earn their vote and I feel confident that we will win. Not just with the vote of support of the Latino community, but every community in this really diverse district. What does internal polling show about this race? I think folks are about to see, but we're in the lead. Are you in the lead internally yes, in your own polling? Are. Yes. And, and to circle back with what we started with here, you're in a comfy, safe seat that you know you could get reelected to. Why take that chance and not just stay there and do what you can do 
from that position. Why take the gamble and you, you might be sidelined? This is not about me. This is about our community and the the needs of our community and having somebody who's going to stand up for us. Like there, we fought so hard all session long, not just delivering big wins, but also killing lots of bad legislation. Like we cannot afford to take a risk of, you know, especially in these times, the threat of this Trump presidency is extremely concerning for our community. Folks are concerned about driving down the street in some circumstances. We need to build relationships with our law enforcement to counter these attacks of Governor Abbott against our community. There, there, there are so many issues, but for it, again, it's, it's, it's about our community and having a leader who is bold, who is willing to stand up and fight for our community no matter the consequences. And that's, that's, that's why I'm a better choice for our community. Since this is intra-party rivalry here, is there any betrayal here, do you think? Because you guys clearly work together uh, you and your opponent have worked together on bills in the Senate and the House. The incumbent has betrayed our community when he voted against the interest of our community, and that's why I'm stepping in to run. What else can you think of we haven't asked you about your candidacy, about your record in the House? I, I think for for us, it's about making sure that we work hard to earn every single vote. And uh, this really, it's a new, big community, diverse community. We want to make sure that, um, that um, folks know why we're running. And for us, it's about bringing the voice of fighting for issues that impact women, impact immigrants, our LGBTQ community, uh, under, especially in these times when they're under attack. What should we expect though in the next, you're starting your campaign and here we are going to the holidays, that's gonna slow things down a little bit, I presume. And then you have what, eight, nine weeks until the election. What should we expect in those eight or nine weeks? Uh, folks should expect us to see them, us knocking on their door, asking for, to listen to see what issues impact them and uh, working to earn their vote every single day from here through the election and beyond.